Photography Explained podcast episode 174, Photography Composition Tips and Techniques. Hi, and a very warm welcome to episode 174 of the Photography Explained podcast. I'm your host, Rick, and in each episode, I will try to explain one photographic thing to you in plain English in less than 27 minutes-ish without the irrelevant details. I'm a professionally qualified photographer based in England with a lifetime of photographic experience, which I share with you in my podcast. Here is the answery bit. Photography composition is what you include in a photo, how you arrange the elements of a photo, and what you do not include in a photo. How you compose a photo will determine the success of a photo or not. You should think hard about the composition before you take a photo. Your composition is what someone looking at your photo sees, so it is very important. OK, the rules of composition can help you to take better composed photos, but there is a step before that, which is the one controlled solely by you. And I will talk about what you're doing more than just the rules of composition. So this is very important, right? Composition is what you're taking a photo of, which is all anyone looking a photo of your sees. So we need to get the composition the best we can. Yes, we do, Rick. OK, that was the answer. But let's start at the beginning. What is a good composition? Well, a good composition creates a photo that is interesting and pleasing and guides the viewer around the content of the photo. A good composition is one that a viewer will spend time looking at. A good composition holds the viewer's attention. A good composition is the starting point for a good or indeed great photo. Well, that's great, Rick, but how do I learn about this composition stuff then? Composition has been around for as long as humans have been creating pictures. You can look at the composition of, oh, I don't know, any classical painter and learn what makes a great composition. There are many examples in the visual arts, so you have no excuse. Look at what Leonardo da Vinci came up with. I have a soft spot for him, having been to the small town in Tuscany called Vinci, where you can see some examples of his fantastic work. It's really well worth checking out if you're in the vicinity. But you can, of course, learn from any great artist, be they a painter, photographer, or any other artist, really. You'll find that the great artists have one thing in common. Every great work that they have created, every great photo, every great drawing, every great painting, they all have a great composition. Well, I think I'm OK saying that. I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure someone will point out a great photo with a rubbish composition now that I've said that. So a great photo doesn't have to have a great composition thinking about it and completely backtracking now. Every now and then there is there is something that flies in the face of this very sound rule of thumb, you know, a photo taken that captured a specific moment. Not a great composition, but a great moment. OK, I'll move on. Now, I recommend that you become a student of composition like what I am. I find myself studying composition when I'm out and about and doing my normal daily stuff. See, I'm fascinated with how things relate to each other and I spend more time than is good for me thinking about composition. I really do. Now, it costs you nothing other than your own time to think about and study composition. And every time you do this, your awareness will grow, directly impacting on how you compose your photos. You just need to start consciously thinking about composition and to start to think more about what you're taking photos of. And that's before you take the photos, that is. And this is a great way to improve your photos, just to think. Right, here are some questions you can ask yourself before taking a photo. Some of these were in the last episode. What are you taking a photo of? Why are you taking the photo? What are you going to do with the photo? What are you going to include in the photo? And lastly, but by no means leastly, what are you not going to include in the photo? OK, so what are you taking a photo of? Just having this one thought might, on its own, improve your composition. Yeah, I discussed this one in the last episode. What do you want from your photography? Still not happy with the title, but it's done now. When you know what you're taking a photo of, you know what the main subject is, right? And that is an excellent place to start. So what else are you going to include in your composition? And as important, sometimes more important, is what you do not include in a photo. Yes, listeners, less sometimes really is more. 
And there is that last question, the harsh one. Why would anybody care about the photo you've taken? Yeah, I know it sounds harsh, but have that thought present when you're taking photos. This has stopped me from taking photos in the past that I wasn't sure about. It's a great question to ask yourself. And another great question to ask yourself is this. If I take this photo, will I be bothered enough to spend time editing it? Because if you can't be bothered to edit it, don't take it. Because if you can't be bothered to edit it, why should somebody else want to look at it? OK, that's enough questions for now. Something else I need you to know. Light. Yes, light. Photography is drawing with light. That is literally what the word photography means. So as well as becoming a student of composition, we need also to become students of light. When you take a photo, you are recording the light. Now, I'm not going to go into the technical side of how, as, well, <laughs> I haven't got a clue between you and me. And knowing this will not help me to take better photos. Now, I'm happy to accept that when I press the shutter button, some magic happens and I've got a photo of what I was taking a photo of. And I have a photo of what I was looking at. You need to be aware of the light's direction, intensity, colour and how it lights up the composition and how moving around the light changes. Light is free. We use it to transform photos from dull to interesting. And that big old free light source is called the sun. Be aware of where it is and remember that it is always moving relative to where we are at any one time. And that clouds can diffuse it to give lovely soft lighting. Clouds are not always a bad thing. Not always. Sunrise and sunset are great times to take photos, but we need to extend that to the time before and after sunrise or sunset. Sometimes much longer than just that moment itself. And, and this is when the magic happens. So if you want to know where the sun's going to rise or set or where it's going to be at any time, get an app so you can find out the direction of the sun at any time in any place. And these apps also tell you what time the sun's going to rise and if there's any obstructions in the way and all that good stuff. They're not dear. Get one. You'll thank me for it. And if you want to know the app I use, drop me an email, sales at rickmacavoyphotography.com, and I'll tell you. I'm not saying which one it is because it, it's going to be a free advert for them, isn't it? But it only costs a tenner. As with composition, be aware of the light and what it is doing, not just when taking photos, but when you're out and about, just, just be conscious of it. Become a student of light. Learn to think about light more. Learn to love light. <laughs> I'll stop there. That was going to get... Yeah, No, I'm just going to stop there. I don't need to go on, do I? Become a student of composition. Become a student of light. You can do this as you go about your daily business. It costs you nothing other than your eyes and a bit of wear on your brain cells, which is a good thing. OK, how do the different elements of a photo relate to each other? Now, this is a biggie for me, how the elements of the composition relate to each other. And most of the time, you have control of this simply by moving around. Work out what the important elements of your photo are and look at how they relate to each other. And as you move around, you'll see how the relationship of the different things changes. And also, as you're moving around, what the light is doing changes. Yes, moving and looking are the special compositional tricks I want you to work on. Walking around and looking and thinking, and that's before you take a photo. Right, let's move on to the nuts and bolts of composition. The rules of composition, you may have heard of rules of composition. Now, they're not really rules, they're more like guidelines, the things that can help you get better compositions. There are loads of these rules, and I'm not going to go into all of them now. I'm going to, going to start with my favourites. Rule of thirds. Leading lines. Balanced composition. Foreground, midground, background. Foreground interest and depth. Fill the frame. Minimalisation, diagonals and triangles, patterns and textures. And here are a few more that I don't necessarily think about, not consciously anyway. Symmetry. Well, I must think about that photographing buildings. Golden ratio, golden triangle, golden spiral, negative space, positive space, centered composition, frame within a frame, rule of odds, dynamic symmetry, center dominant eye, and many others. 
Check out episode 14. Blimey, that was a long time ago. For a bit more on the rules of composition, like I said, I'm not going to go on about all of them here. Some of them I've never consciously used and some I use all the time. And there, there are some that I don't really understand. Um, I've seen the pictures of them, but I can't really fathom out how they're meant to help me. So if you've seen some rules of composition, you go, I just don't get it. Don't worry about it. Use the ones that you do get. And talking of which, I'm going to talk about one of them now. The really helpful rule of thirds. Now, this is nice and simple, but it's so hard to describe in words. Well, at least I think it is. Look at a photo and put two horizontal lines, one a third up, one two thirds up. Now put two vertical lines, one a third in from the left, one a third in from the right. That's the rule of thirds then. And as it turns out, my iPhone has these in the default camera app, which is dead handy and tells you a lot, doesn't it? So you've got four lines and four points where the lines meet the intersections. So how do these help you? Well, simple. For any photo with the sky in, put the horizon on either the upper or the lower line. This stops you, and me indeed, from putting it in the middle, cutting a photo in half. This single conscious act will improve any composition, potentially. I'm not, I can't say any composition because there are times when it won't. And the two horizontal lines help us to align things horizontally, and the vertical lines help us to align things vertically. And if you put the subject of a photo where two lines meet at the intersection point, that works nicely as well. It just, it just works with us humans. Again, we're taking the subject out from the middle, which most of the time will help to create a more interesting composition. But if you're taking photos of people, don't do this all the time. You can do it, but sometimes it makes sense to have the person in the middle of a photo. And this is the point, really. Not every rule works for every photo. There are many photography composition rules. You just need to have a look at them and see which ones might help you. But apply the rule of thirds as I've described and you should see a very quick improvement in your compositions, which has to be a good thing, doesn't it? And in doing this, you're also starting to think more about your composition. So get cracking with the rule of thirds, but consider this is the start of your journey to take better photos. Slight digression here. As soon as you start to think more about your compositions, they do get better. It's just part of the, the, the process, really. Learn the rules. Try out the rules. See which ones work for you. We're all different. I can't tell you which ones will work for you as there are so many variables. And I don't know what you like to look at and I don't know what you're taking photos of. But give some of them a go and it will help you to think more about your composition. This is the most important thing, the thinking about the composition. As for me, the rules I use help me with the photos that I take, and, and this is the point. Find the rules that will help you and learn how to use them. They will help you take better composed photos and also help you begin to develop your own style, your own look. Break the rules. Now, <laughs> you'll read in a lot of places, learn the rules and then break them. I don't really get this. I'm never sure what they really mean, so I'm going to move on from that. Learn the rules and break them. Do what you want with that. I'm not. <laughs> my one photo rule. Check out episode 152, how my one photo rule will help you take better photos for lots more on the rule of photography that I created all by myself. And I'm going to come back to this in episode 181. Moving around, the secret to great composition. Move around and see what other views you get of something. My secret, super special ninja technique for getting better compositions is to move around and see what changes. Moving around really is the secret to great composition. Moving around and looking. And let's not constrain ourselves to eye level. High and low viewpoints can transform a composition, as can moving forward and back, and to the left and to the right. You could change the foreground, middle ground and background and how they relate to each other and also what the light's doing and how the light relates to the subjects in your photo. So yes, my number one composition technique is moving and looking. Yep, moving and looking. OK, look at your photos. Right, I'm going to come on to this in episode 179, which is, um, well, it's not due out until next month. So let's look at that quickly here. You really need to look at your photos, and that's really look at them. 
Why would somebody else like the photos that you have created? Why should someone care about your photos? Yes, it's a harsh world out there with so many photos online. What are you going to do to get noticed? What are you going to do differently to make your photo stand out to avoid being just another photo being instantly dismissed on social media feeds? Learn to really look at the photos that you have taken. Look at other people's photos. Yeah, while I'm on the subject, look at the photos that great photographers have created. Again, I'm going to talk about this much, much more in episode 179, but I'll give you this one steer for now. You know what you like photos of, right? Pick one thing you really love looking at photos of and find the best photographer on the planet and look at their work. Now, that's just one photographer who takes photos of something that you're interested in. And really look at the photos. Try to work out what makes them great as photos and as a photographer. You've got to study the photos for this to work. Really look at them. Think about them. Think about all the things that I've said. OK, so what is the perfect composition? There isn't one, so don't try and get it. The best composition is the one that gives you the most interesting and appealing photo. And and this is where I had a realisation that I'm never going to squeeze this into an episode because this, there's this small thing called the camera stuff too, which can affect the composition. Yep, I forgot all about this and um, the different settings and what they can do to a composition. So... Here are a few things to think about, which I might talk about in the next episode. I might do a composition two. Why not? It's important. Here's a few things. Aperture, shutter speed, focal length, focal point, depth of field, wide angle lens, standard lens, telephoto lens, zoom lens. I forgot I wrote this in my script. Actually, I might have to have a rethink. There might be another episode here on composition. I'll record this episode and have a think. And now I'm recording this episode, I think I'm going to do another episode. Not written it yet. Okay, the talky bit. Well, yes, even more talky. Composition for me is all about what you want to take a photo of and making the best that you can. For me, this is the first thing you need to concentrate on. What is important in photography is the final image. That is what we should be focusing on, no pun intended. That was dreadful, wasn't it? Work hard on your composition and you will take your photos to the next level. And it follows that you will become a better photographer, right? And that's what we all want to do, isn't it? Sure, there are rules of photography, but they don't help you pick an interesting subject. They just give you some guidelines for how to compose a photo. Yes, there is a step before this, which is the why bit. No, the rules of composition are the how bit. And there is nothing wrong with them. Far from it. They are very helpful and I do recommend that you have a look at them and decide which ones will help you. Don't try to learn all of them, though. If you try and learn all the rules, you'll get nowhere. You'll just be confused when you go to take photos. I think I admitted it before. There are some rules of composition that I struggle with, to be honest with you. There's some quite complicated and funky stuff out there. I don't use it. I ignore it all. I use the stuff I understand that helps me such as the rule of thirds. Apply the rule of thirds and something happens straight away, which I'll remind you of. I don't mind repeating myself here. If you be taking photos with the horizon in the middle, just moving that to the upper or lower line will dramatically improve most photos. That one simple thing will make such a big difference. And it also helps you to get the horizon level, which has to be a bonus. This is a, a really good tip for landscape photography. And <laughs> this is scripted, but it did pop into my head when I was writing it, so I'm going to stick with the words. And there is one thing that has quite literally just popped into my head as I write this. You need to get the best composition that you can when you take a photo. Don't just take photos of whatever and try to make the composition work afterwards in Lightroom, Photoshop, or whatever you use. No, that is not the plan here. Get the composition right in camera. Now, you might need to take more than one photo to get the best composition that you can, and that's fine. But in time, once you've worked on this enough, the day will come when you can take one photo and move on. And that is our end point, by the way. And that's that's the place I'm at most of the time. See, I used to take 10 photos of the same thing, all from slightly different angles. And I'd go back into Lightroom when I got home and see which one was a decent composition. But that's not the way to do it. So 
do not do this. Work on the before you take the photo bit and recompose if you're not happy, but do this trying to get the best composition you can as you take the photo. With a slight change of composition, you can quickly turn a decent photo, an average photo, into a great photo. And the more you practice, the quicker this will happen, the more instinctive it will become. This is something that we can and should all be working on all the time, not just beginner photographers, all of us. Blimey, that came out of nowhere, but I'm glad I remembered it. What if I use my phone to take photos and not a camera? All of the above applies. You're just using a different device to take photos. And taking my iPhone as an example, using the default camera app as it is, the grid is there for the rule of thirds. That's how helpful and significant the rule of thirds is. It's there every time I take a photo. It is built into the default camera app on the iPhone. So there must be something in it, right? The different thing with the phone, though, is that you don't have the viewfinder to peer through. You just got that lovely big screen, unlike my Canon 6D. Now, if you've only ever taken photos with a phone, this will be your norm. But if you started taking photos with a camera, you might struggle with this. Or as my script says, if you started taking photos with a phone, you might struggle with this. Rubbish, Rick. Or if you're really old like me, you will definitely struggle with this, not having a viewfinder, that is. And if you go from a phone to a camera, you'll have the viewfinder to get used to. So you might find it a bit odd if you start off with a phone and then you develop onto a camera. Now, taking photos with a phone, it's different from taking photos with a camera. Firstly, because of the physical size and shape differences, a camera has been designed to take photos, let's not forget, whereas the poor old phone has to do a lot more than a camera and be small enough to take with you everywhere and slide in a pocket and all that stuff. But we still expect it to be as good as a camera, don't we? It's tough on phones, isn't it, expecting so much of them and for them to be so small as well, which is one of my problems with the phone. But everything that I've said can apply to taking photos with a phone, which... I mean, it's only another device for taking photos these days, isn't it? And my advice to take better photos includes putting your camera on a tripod. Now, should you do this with a phone? Yes, you can still take better photos with a phone by putting it on a tripod, in my opinion. This will still help you to take better photos, as counterintuitive as it is. The reason I say this is that I'm thinking of the phone as just another device with which to take photos, which which is fair enough, isn't it? I, I take photos with my camera on a tripod, so shouldn't I take them with my phone on a tripod? Well, one for you to think about, dear listener. What if I use a film camera? Everything applies just the same. You just don't have the luxury of the things you get with digital cameras to help you, so you just have to get it bang on in camera first time, or it's going to be expensive or a waste of money. And getting the composition right starts and end with what you point your camera at. Not sure that that line makes much sense, does it? What do I do? I photograph buildings. I tend to use the widest focal length available to me and I fill the frame with the building or interior space. There isn't much space around my photos and this is something that I didn't even know I was doing until it was pointed out to me. And when I'm on holiday doing my travel photography stuff, I tend to use the widest focal length or the shortest focal length. I don't often use the bits in between. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> it's just how I've ended up. And for my travel photography work, I try to convey a sense of depth with one prominent foreground detail. And I also love capturing moving water. There's lots more that I do, but I'll come on to this in future episodes. But I do think about the composition before I raise my camera to my eye. Well, before I take my camera out of the bag, actually. And as I've said before, I, as I go about my daily business, I'm always looking at how things relate to each other and what the light is doing. I think about composition a lot. It's become an interest of mine. And, and I've told you which, which rules of composition I use, haven't I? Summing up, I try to take better photographs every time. That is always my aim. I try to take a better photograph than the last one I took, and it always starts with the composition. Composition is king. And that is what I do. Some thoughts from the last episode. What do you want out of your photography? With hindsight, another title could have been better. 
But having said that, the feedback has been very positive, which is nice, of course. So thank you if you give me some lovely feedback. Feel free to give us some feedback on this episode as well. Email me, sales at rickmacavoyphotography.co.uk, not .com. I must stop doing that. Okay, what are you taking the photos of? What are you going to put in your photos? And who is going to see your photos? This sums up the subject nicely. We can talk all we want about the endless number of things in the world of photography, but these three things override everything else. That's what you're going to take photos of, what are you going to put into your photos and who's going to see your photos? And I'm going to add one more thing here, the harsh one. Why would anyone care about your photos? It's your job as the photographer to make your photograph as interesting as possible so people care about them. Next episode, how to take photos getting started. Well, it was, but now it's not because I'm going to do a part two of the, the composition thing might be a short episode, but I'm fine with that. I want to pick up the camera bits now before I go into the taking photos. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, ask me a question. If you have a question you would like me to answer, email me at sales at rickmacavoyphotography.co.uk or head over to the podcast website, photographyexplainedpodcast.com forward slash start. And if you just want to say hi, say hi. I love hearing from my listeners. So yeah, say hi, it's all fine. Now, get an email from me. If you would like to receive a weekly email from me where I tell you what I'm thinking about, just fill in the form on the podcast website and every Friday you will get a nice email from me. How utterly splendid. Okay, I'm done. Well, this episode was brought to you by, um, yep, I'm still in the healthy phase, would you believe, and it's now middle February. I'm doing well, aren't I? So I'm eating fewer cheese and pickle sandwiches and I've had one bag of crisps, okay, since the new year. So this episode was brought to you by a chicken and bacon and mayo sandwich on wholemeal bread washed down with water. Yep, that's right. That's all I've had. Which I consumed before I sat down in my homemade, acoustically cushioned recording emporium. Yep, but no crisps. I've been Rick McAvoy. Thanks again very much for listening to my small but perfectly formed podcast, it says here, and for giving me 27-ish minutes of your valuable time. Now, I reckon this episode will be about 28 minutes long after I've edited out the mistakes and other bad stuff. So, hope to see you on the next episode. Take care, stay safe. Cheers from me, Rick.